Hi, my name is Gaurav Galut and I welcome you to this video from quickdevnotes.com. Before we get going, let's quickly have a look at what we have covered so far in the previous videos. We started by looking at the problems associated with a tightly coupled applications. In order to solve those problems, we started by abstracting out the concrete Im implementations to their respective interfaces. We then made sure that the commerce manager class was no more responsible for instantiating its own dependencies. In fact, we moved that code to a dependency injection container and that container was Artifact. In this video, we'll be writing our very first unit test for our commerce manager class. In order to write the test, I'll be using n unit framework and n substitute which is a mocking framework. Instead of using n substitute, you can also use mock or fake it easy or any other substitution framework of your preference. Before we get into code and start writing our first test, let's quickly have a look at the basic structure. We start off by creating a class and in order to make sure that the compiler understands this as a test class, we need to annotate it. The way in which we annotate our class in n unit framework is adding a text fixture annotation. Now it's important to note that this annotation may vary based on the framework you are using to write your test. The next step is to add a method and we need to annotate this method as a test. Any test can be broken down into three sections. The first one is arrange. The arrange section contains all the declarations or initializations or mockings that are specific to that particular test. The next section is act. This is the section where you call your method that needs to be tested. The last section is known as asserts where we make all the assertions about the execution or the output of the test. It's very obvious that we want to have multiple tests in our test class. So instead of mocking our components inside a particular test, we can do that in a higher level so that we don't have to keep the same code at different test cases. In order to do that, we have to add a setup method and annotate it as a setup. The setup method contains all the code that has to be executed before every test. If we have multiple tests in our test class, the workflow will be setup execution, the first test, then again setup and the next test. You may consider a setup as a global space which is accessible to all the tests and your declarations and mockings are global. So now let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio and write our very first test. So here we are back in Visual Studio and in order to save some time what I've done is that I've created a project known as course commerce app test and I have added and substitute and an unit framework. I have a commerce manager test class. I have a setup method and I actually have created a test. Okay, so let's start by creating an object for my commerce manager. So as you can see, the commerce manager has a couple of dependencies. Now, I think it is the right time to tell you what is a mocked implementation, how it is beneficial for unit testing. If I create instances of the interfaces that are required by commerce manager, I will actually create the in instances of the concrete implementations. For example, if I have an implementation class that talks to the database, I might instantiate and that object of the class and that object will interact with the database which is really bad we can hamper our data and that's not what we want so what we're going to do is that we will use and substitute and create mocked implementations for those interfaces i have created class variables for all my interfaces and let's start by mocking them the way you do it in and substitute is that you request your substitute for I logger. So this will provide me a substitu uh, substitution or I would say a mocked implementation for that interface and my concrete implementation will never be invoked. And now that I have mocked all my interfaces, let's provide them to my commerce manager. In this particular test, I want to make sure that customer is notified once and only once when the order has been processed. The way we do it is we assert the expected result. So I want that the expected call should be one. So 
So if the customer notifier receives one and only one call to its method, this means the test case will pass. Otherwise, it would fail. And in order to do that, I have to actually call one of my methods in my act. So I will say manager dot process order and I have to pass in an order to it. So what I've done here is I've created a dummy order and it has all the details that are required by the process order method. There is a glitch. I know it would be interesting if we find it on the go. Let's debug our test. Okay, we have our debug point. So let's get inside the process order. And you will see that when we reach onto our if block, the if block won't be executed. But before that, let me show you the customer validator. Now, if you notice that this is a proxy of customer validator, let's go ahead and try to step inside it and we could not and there is a reason to it if you remember this is a proxy yes that is a proxy and this is why proxies are created for we avoid executing the actual piece of code and instead of that we use mock implementations provided by our substitution frameworks so that we are not contacting our database or to our external services and we keep our tests limited so if I go ahead, our test should fail now. And yes, it did fail. The red cross is a failure. So how do we fix it? What we have to do is that we have to mock uh, the output that, which is expected out of the customer validator. So we, if I go inside the commerce manager, our method was customer validator dot customer validate customer, and it should pass it should be it should return a true in order to get inside this if block and process further so let's go ahead and do that so what i'm saying here is that whenever i receive a call for validate customer and with these particular customer details the method should always return a true let's go ahead and run our test again let's get inside And this time we will get into the if block. And yes, we did. You must have noticed this. We were able to process the payment. And if I go inside the process payment, actually it should have returned a true, but it did not. So that is the reason why payment status is still false. So what I need to do is similar what we have done for customer validator. So we're going to need to mock this method call as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's read on our test and it should pass now. So I have bypassed the process order now. Let's see what it results. And yes, our test has passed. So which means our customer notifier has received only one and only one call. So this was a very basic test that we have written. There is one other way in which I can do this. So instead of passing the actual details to my validate customer, I can actually use arg.any of type customer so what this means is you must remember that my uh, validate customer is actually expecting the details of a customer so what i'm saying here is by r dot any dot of customer is that for any customer details you have to return true and similarly i can do the same over here payment details so if i run my test again it will still pass And yes, it does. So that's it. That's all for now. We have written our very first test for our commerce app. I will definitely push this code onto the repository and you can always access it. There are a couple of ways in which we can 
optimizers definitely but they are more in respect of being an experienced one with mocking and all so i will leave it as simple as possible for now thanks for watching if you like the video please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you did not then please leave a comment before giving me a hit down and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos thank you so much thank you for your time